Part 3 of the Unit 4 seminar is on geometric sequences. Now the definition is a sequence of numbers that follow a pattern of multiplying a constant number to one term in order to generate the next. All of these examples are examples of geometric sequences. So instead of adding or subtracting a constant number, we are multiplying. The definition of geometric sequence in your textbook looks something like this. So the constant term that we are multiplying from each term to the next is called the ratio. And we can define geometric sequences and the common ratio like so. T3 my, divided by T2 is going to be equal to T2 divided by T1. Now that's a very important feature of geometric sequences. The common ratio is always represented by the term R. However, all the other um, terms in the formula are going to remain the same. So for example, A still represents the first term. And R is, as I said, calculated by dividing consecutive terms in the geometric sequence. So for this particular sequence, T2 divided by T1 is equal to 2. And if you notice, T, the third term divided by the second term is also equal to 2. The fourth term divided by the third term is also equal to 2, and so on and so on. These are just a couple more examples of different sequences, where, but we're just going to skip over these for now. Now, before we covered that arithmetic sequences follow a linear pattern. However, geometric sequences are going to be a little bit different. Once again, we know that we're not supposed to join the points because we're talking about separate terms. For this particular geometric sequence, this is a general term formula of a geometric sequence. And because we're dealing with exponents, we have an exponential relationship. So 2 to the power of x, that represents a geometric sequence. And it also illustrates an exponential relationship. Now, do not confuse common ratios with common differences. Ge geometric sequences have a common ratio, which is constant. However, the first differences are never the same. That is why that the relationship between n and tn for geometric sequences is nonlinear, and it's actually an exponential relationship. So the general term formula looks something like this. The first term is still represented by a. To get the second term, we would multiply a by a common ratio. And the third term, we would multiply a by a common ratio squared. And that gives us this general term formula, a times r to the power of n minus 1, where a still represents the first term, r is the common ratio, However, Tn is still the nth term. It also um, represents the general term formula. So Tn actually means two different things. The general term formula as well as the value of the last term. Always remember the value of the last term, just like before. Now, if we look at the sequence in our first example where the common ratio was 2 and the first term is equal to 1, we can write our general term formula like this, 1 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. This formula, the general term formula, is important because it lets us obtain terms that are far down the list. So, for example, if I substitute let n equal into this formula, 
I would be able to generate the value of the fifth term. So it would simply be 2 to the power of 5 minus 1, and it would simplify from there. So if we have this general term formula, and I am supposed to evaluate the first three terms of this sequence, I would simply substitute n is equal to 1 in order to generate t1. So 3 to the power of 1 minus 1 gives me a value of 3 to the power of 0. And anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. For the second term, I would let n equal 2. And that would give me the answer for the second term. And to find the value of third term, n is equal to 3. We can do the same thing for a more complicated general term formula, or a more complicated geometric sequence. OK, in order to find the number of terms, we had a similar question with arithmetic sequences. And just like before, in order to solve this question, we need the value of the last term and the first few consecutive terms. Now, the reason that we need the first few consecutive terms is we, because we need to be able to identify the value of a, my second term, as well as my common ratio. And I'm taking my common ratio by taking the second term and dividing it by the first term. But don't just stop at that. Also look at the third term and divide that by the second term. 8 divided by 4 is also equal to 2. And the fourth term divided by the third term, 16 divided by 8, is also equal to 2. Using this information, uh, we need to solve for n. However, we're given one more piece of inf information, 512. And that is supposed to represent the value of the last term. So Tn is, represents my last term in this equation. So I'm going to use my geometric term formula, general term formula, and I'm going to substitute what I know. Tn is equal to 512. A is equal to 2. R is equal to 2. Now, whenever you have these types of questions, I have to get rid of this A first. Don't ever combine your A and your R. They are two separate uh, items. You can combine them if it's a common base, but to be safe, keep them separate. And I want to get rid of my A. So that means dividing both sides by A. A little bit off there. So 512 divided by 2 is equal to 256. And now I've got rid of my a, so I'm just left with my common ratio to the power of n minus 1. Now, in order to solve for n, I need to convert both sides of the equation to have a base of 2. So just using trial and error in your calculator, I know that 2 to the power of 8 is equal to 256. Once the left-hand side and the right-hand side both have a common base, we can simply eliminate my common base and just deal with my ex exponents. So 8 is equal to n minus 1. Move all the terms to one side, and I can solve for n. n is equal to 9. Therefore, there are 9 terms in this sequence. So you have to go through a series of steps, and you have to know what you are substituting your values for into the equation. Do not mix up your Tn, your A, or your R. But it's very straightforward in order to solve for the number of terms. Now another example is to find Tn given two terms. So you're trying to find um, Tn given two random terms. So we're just going to take a quick break for a second.